Hey guys, welcome to Life of Bliss. Today I'll be talking about building your own projector screen. Building your own screen is a great way to save money and get a much better image from your projector than projecting either on a wall or a bed sheet or anything like that. It's about a one day project and this cost me roughly $150 with the materials that I used. Another great advantage is you're able to make this as big as you want and in whatever aspect ratio that you want that's going to work best for your room. And with all that saved money you can I don't know, start a college fund for your kid. Or put on some backlight LEDs. Yeah, sorry son. So behind me is the 120 inch screen that I built from the Flexi Gray material from Carl's Place. Carl's Place is an online retailer that sells many different materials to help you build a DIY screen. If you haven't seen my video that compares three different materials from Carl's Place in different lighting environments, be sure to check that out. That is a very helpful tool to help you decide which material is going to look best in your situation. Yeah. But this video is more about the build process, so let's get started. First, we'll start with the screen. A 120 inch 16 by nine aspect ratio screen is what will work best in my setting. The math is pretty straightforward, but to be absolutely sure the measurements are correct, there are many screen size calculators out there. This one I'm using is from projectorscreens.com. Since an exact 120 inch diagonal screen wasn't the prettiest numbers, I went slightly smaller to get my dimensions. This particular calculator lets you choose other aspect ratios as well and is a quick reference to make sure your numbers are accurate. Now if you want a borderless screen, these are the numbers you'll need and you're ready to go. If you plan on adding a black border with felt tape like I'll be doing later, you'll need to add the thickness of the border to each side. You do not want to add this number to the aspect ratio dimensions as your ratio will be off. For example, my roughly 120 inch screen is 104 inches wide. I will be adding a 1.25 inch border on each side, so I need to add 2.5 inches total to my width, giving me 106.5 inches. The same with the height, adding 2.5 inches to get my final height of 61 inches. Now that's out of the way, on to actually building the frame. For the wood, I went with 1x4 poplar boards. The top and bottom were cut to the exact width and the sides and center support were all cut 7 inches short of my total height to account for the top and bottom boards. Using a Craig jig, I put two holes in both ends of the shorter boards and started assembling the frame. It's important to make sure that the boards are flush during this process so the outline of the board doesn't show through your screen. This is the first time I've used a Craig pocket hole clamp, but for this it worked really well and kept everything flush. To make sure there are no rough edges, it's not a bad idea to flip the frame over and go over the seams with a sander. To attach the frame, I'll be using a French cleat. I already had one half of the cleat already on the wall from my test screen video, so I just need to cut one other board at a 45 degree angle to attach to the screen. Once attached, it will sit against the wall and be held up by the bottom board like this. Since it will need to be flush against the wall, I pre-drilled my holes and used a larger bit to countersink the screw heads. With the frame downstairs, I took a few measurements to make sure the screen would be the correct height and attach the cleat. Take your time and be sure this is as even as possible because this will determine how level your screen sits on the wall. All right guys, so real quick, I wanted to bring out the uh, test screen that I made here recently. You can see the cleat is up top there. And then to space it out the same on the bottom, I just put a few spacers there. Uh, that's just to give it the same space from the wall as it is up top. Now on the screen that I'm making over here, I'm not going to be doing that just because for the LED lights, there's going to be a perimeter all the way around on the back side of three quarter inch wood. That's gonna act like the spacer like those did. So I won't need to do that. Um, one thing I did want to point out, if your wall is not completely flat or if you have a little bit of warping in your wood, once that's spaced out, that is an inch, or excuse me, that's three quarters of an inch. And then we'll come over here to this side and it's pulled out from the wall a little bit more. It's about an inch and a quarter. So uh, essentially what I'm gonna do to fix that is just make another cleat like I did there in the center and just throw it down here in this lower quadrant just to pull it closer to the wall. So to do this, I attached the cleat first to the frame, then came back and attached the lower part to the wall. This will ensure that the height isn't altered on that side and only pulls the frame closer to the wall. And now for the fun part, attaching the screen. Like I said in my previous video, I chose to go with the flexi gray material from Carl's Place. Man, that was a weak attempt to unroll. 
I highly suggest paying the extra for shipping the screen on a roll instead of folded to prevent any major creases in the screen. To get started, make sure the gray side you'll project the image on is face down and the black backing is face up. Center the frame on the screen with at least four inches of material overlapping each side. You can cut away any major excess pieces just so they won't get in the way later. Next, using a staple gun, I stretched the screen over the frame and started attaching it from the back. The best way to do this is to start in the middle of each side and place four or five staples to hold it in place. Just like a canvas, you want to work your way from the center out towards the corners. I repeated this process several times, only stapling down 6 to 12 inches at a time. I found that as I pulled the material over the edge of the frame, it helped reduce any minor waves in the screen by also pulling towards the corners as well, almost at a diagonal angle. I secured each side up about 6 inches away from the corners and was able to fold the material over itself to get it nice and tight. Once everything is secure, take some scissors or a sharp razor blade and cut off the excess material. Be extremely careful not to slip off the frame and cut into the face of your brand new screen. That would be a costly mistake. Also, here's a close up of how I did one of the corners. Finally, stand it up, throw it on the wall and admire that beautiful rectangle that you just made. So at this point, the screen building process is actually done. If you were looking to have just an edgeless screen like this and not do any LEDs or black border, this is ready to hang up and go. Um, now that I've gotten this up on the wall, there's no creases, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and take it down, put the LED strips around the backside, and then we'll install the black felt tape for the black border. All right, so let's switch gears and start talking LEDs. First, we'll go back to the table saw where I cut some small strips out of three quarter inch thick material to go along the outside edge. This long one here will be nice for the top edge. Ah, well, shit. No problem, we'll use that one for the side, and this one here will be the top. Son of a bitch! Sorry about that. Once all the pieces were cut, I attached them on the back side of the screen along my staple line with a brad nailer. Be sure the nails that you use are not long enough to go through both boards and the front of your screen. I didn't make a sharp corner on the edges, so the LED strip didn't make a sharp curve and create gaps in the backlight. So for the LEDs going around the back side of the screen, I chose to go with the same products that I used for my bar area. I've used these for about a year now and have had really good luck with them. It's from a company called MyLight or MeLight, however you want to pronounce it. But essentially it's just a controller box that all of the LED lights run through and then you can have a wireless remote to either change color, turn them on and off, adjust the brightness levels, things like that. So like I said, this has been a really good product for me, so I'm going to continue to use it behind the screen there and be able to control it off of all of the same controller. Um, all the products here that you see, I'll leave links in the description down below, but essentially for the lights, you'll just need a power source, a controller, and a control box. A couple of LED strips. Um, these are about 16 foot a piece. I needed two of those to get around the 120 inch screen. One of them wouldn't do it. so. Um, this isn't waterproof or anything, it's just a regular LED strip with some sticky backing back here. Uh, it does not stick to wood that well, so we're going to glue it down with some hot glue as we go around. And then also, you'll need some 5 wire extension wire, which I did not realize I was out of, so I will have to order some more and get the rest of this done another day. But let's go ahead and get started getting these LEDs around the back of the screen. So here's just a quick shot of all the components necessary for the LED lighting. Again, I'll leave all the links to these products down below to make it easy for you guys to find. To start out, it's a good idea to map out where you're going to place the LEDs, including where the ends will intersect. Technically, these strips have quick disconnect ends that allow you to add more strips, so no soldering is required. In my case, I didn't think the ends would line up in a convenient place for that to happen and not make it noticeable with some sort of gap in the lighting, so I chose to solder the ends to a common input and have the strips meet in the opposite corner, which you'll see in a moment. I go into great detail on how to solder these strips together with different connectors in my bar lighting video, which I'll link below, but I'm just going to quickly go over things here. I cut the ends off of each strip and soldered those to a few feet of extension wire with a quick disconnect soldered to that end to make one input for both strips. This will allow the screen to easily be removed and disconnected if need be. The new extension wire that I got ended up having quick disconnects on it already, so this was the only soldering that needed to be done. After soldering, it's always a good idea to test the lighting to make sure that all of the colors still work. 
I hid the wires inside the frame and started routing the LEDs around the mounting strips, peeling back the paper to expose the sticky backing. A dab of hot glue was applied every six to eight inches to ensure the strips would not fall off down the road. I worked my way around to the opposite corner where the two strips would meet. To prevent any gaps in light, I looped each strip a bit and tucked the excess inside the frame. Although the black backing should prevent any light from coming through the screen, I overlapped the strips and glued them together to reduce any excess light behind the screen. Alright boys, we're in the home stretch. Last major step is adding the felt tape border from Carl's Place. I wanted a very thin border, so I went with the 2 inch wide tape. I also wanted the ends to be covered, so that is how I calculated my border earlier being 1.25 inches since 3 quarter of an inch would be used up on the ends. The corners were done by cutting out a 3 quarter inch notch and folding the top and bottom over. This tape was super easy to apply. I just lined up and stuck the tape along the back edge, then rolled the remainder over the front. One thing to note is this tape does not stretch like the screen material, so you'll need to be precise with your cuts. Like I mentioned earlier, the extension wire I got already had quick disconnect plugs, so no more soldering was needed. No one likes seeing wires, so I routed them through the wall to where the rest of my AV equipment is located. Connecting the LED controller box is pretty self-explanatory, but here's a quick pick of how the wires are connected. After my wife and I awkwardly took too long to find the correct mounting point, it was finally time to fire it up. Well, that's not good. After a brief Griswold moment, All right, let's try this again. Oh yeah. Everybody come out quick, look at the lights! <laughs> All right, calm down, it's not that impressive, but they do look pretty cool. So as I mentioned earlier, the bar area in my basement is outfitted with the LEDs and controllers from my light as well. Each remote can control up to four zones and these have been working flawless for me over the past year. Each zone can be controlled separately or they can be all synced to do the same colors or functions at the same time. As far as the screen goes, after doing some initial calibration with my projector, the image looks better than it ever has. The flexi gray material really does a great job in lower ambient light settings and the blacks look incredible with the room completely dark. Colors are still fairly vibrant and the image is very bright even with my Panasonic projector on eco mode. I honestly couldn't be happier with how easy it was to get such a great image for the cost of the materials. And while the LED lights are a cool feature, I gotta be honest, if I'm watching a serious full length movie, they're usually off so they don't become a distraction but I do still think they are a great addition to the room. So there are links for all of the products that I use down in the description below. Just by clicking on those links, you guys do help to build the channel, so I do appreciate all of your support. Thanks to Carl's Place for sending out the materials to build this awesome DIY screen. Hope the video helped you guys. Hit that like button if so. Subscribe for more home theater and DIY content, and I'll see you soon.